It took over two years, but we are not only reviewing a musical, SpongeBob the musical to be exact, but Matt is here too. Joining us for potentially the last time before baby arrives is Fran. Hey, it's your favorite baby mama. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and frequent flyer of the podcast, Rachel. Hello, everyone. I'm Matt. I'm Chad, and you're listening to the 113th episode of We Used to Talk About This at Work. We are hopping into another fun win with um, two regulars, Fran and Rachel. Um, how you ladies doing today? Doing, doing good. Right. Doing good. I can't complain overall. Overall. Yeah. How about, how about you, Rachel? You doing good? It's the weekend, so yeah, I'm happy. It's the weekend. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, so before we get into the show proper, I want Rachel and I saw something when we were setting up everything. And I want to get your honest reaction to this uh, teaser trailer. Oh, I already know what, what this is. Like, what in the slave ship is this? A kid. <laughs> I'm setting out to follow my dreams. I know this ain't what I think it is. I'm gonna be king of the pirates. With hey, pirates. no, not me. August. Ooh, uh, August 31st. So we just watched the teaser trailer for Netflix's One Piece series. And uh, I just want to get everyone's honest thoughts on it. Okay, so I was real skeptical because I thought at, fir at first I was like, oh shit, we get into a slave ship movie. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and then I saw, you and know, right before June, the straw hat. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, just disrespectful before Juneteenth. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I saw the straw hat. I was like, oh, shit, I don't think, is this what I think it is? And it was. And now I'm sitting here going, oh, I haven't really been paying attention to this casting. And, you know, live action stuff, depending on who does it, is not the greatest. So I'm hope. I'm going to hope for the rest. I'm going to be optimistic about the live action of One Piece. That's all I got. That's, that's all I got. Um, Matt, how are you feeling? Because you're you looking know. like, oh, shit. You look, you look dry, uh, man. <laughs> I don't... Like, I'm optimistic. I mean, when they showed the characters, like, they don't, that's not what Nami looks like at all. And I know, like, how they're, mesh, they're meshing a lot of stuff up because where they meet these characters at or not how it is in the manga and anime. I get that. Um, I'm going to hold out hope. I did get, no lie, I got goosebumps when Luffy stretched his arm out. So and to me, that's going, that would be the deal breaker of the movie because a lot of this stuff is not tailor-made for a live-action movie. So, mm -hmm. like, all their abilities they have and stuff like that. So I am optimistic. Mm -hmm. Um, I will be there. Well, so the drops, <laughs> I will be watching this. Uh, so I hope it wins me over. So seeing the trailer, I'm a little bit more excited, but also a little bit, not sad. Sad is not the right word. A little bit apprehensive. Yes. There we go. So yes. I'm in the middle. So I, I'm going to see it. And either A, I'm going to love this, or A, I'm going to be getting back on, dropping my bonus review of how this is trash. This is going me, and I'm disappointed. But I have high hopes for it, because the writer of this um, is in works with them doing it. So hopefully they can pull some things out that make this mm -hmm. better than um, what I hear people talked about how the last Avatar was. Yeah. So what else? Uh, what else was I going to say? I'm hoping that they they put money towards the cgi like yes do they, they really needed to do this for one piece because of all of the things like 
uh, shoot, what's the clown's name? Um, you want Big Mama's cloud? No, um, because in the first arc, the the clown that oh, the clown, um, yeah, uh, Bo, uh, I know you're talking about, um, can't think of his name right now. I can't remember like, what his name was. Oh. Yeah, Sue. What's the clown's name in One Piece? The one that, Buggy. Buggy. Okay. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> Buggy. Right. Like c- considering, if you just think about Buggy's power, and we just saw him, mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, y'all gonna need some good CGI to be like doing all of that, <laughs> everything that he does. And, and right, and that's my thing is like the CGI for like all their powers really. Well, not yeah. all of them. Majority of their powers really is based off the CGI. How if it's gonna look nice or it's gonna look corny or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. So let's let's get some opinions from the side of the table that has never seen this anime before, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never seen One Piece, so I have no expectations really. But I thought it looked like a fun adventure. So yeah, well, that I, describes One Piece absolutely. Right. That, I was just about to say that. Yeah, it is a fun adventure they go on. <laughs> I, I feel the that same they are way. currently still going on. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> a thousand and eighty five episodes later. Oh my goodness. Um I found was... that one piece. <laughs> I, I tried to give you an exact number, ten sixty four. Oh, okay. I overshot it. Damn. <laughs> um but yeah, You'll I feel the same way. It looks good and it's like I I know some people are gonna have issues with like the main guy is Luffy, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well casting him as a Latino, but like just from this like two minute teaser him i kind of liked his vibe like his optimism and stuff you know and while i i I heard that these people have powers in the in the show and i agree that the money needs to go to that i really hope that they spent money on writers as in you know helping this dialogue because like it's good to know that they've got the guy that wrote, wrote the manga but writing a manga and writing an anime and also a live action show are three different animals and I hope that mm-hmm. he has mm-hmm. the support of people that can make what this te- this teaser looks like, the show as in interesting and like not full of corny dialogue. But yeah, too, yeah, Luffy is an optimistic person like that. So he's the one who, the heart and the captain of the crew. Okay. The yes. only thing I would say is I wish it was a movie and not a TV show because I have way too many TV shows coming down to watch. So, I mean, I feel like that's indicative of like our um, hesitancy to invest time into any streaming show because like, yeah, they'll drop the first season and then like <laughs> an hour and a half after they drop it. Hey, you know, we canceling that, right? Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. that's not a thing anymore, right? We we already yeah. fired people. We we took away their access to the uh, to the studio mm-hmm. lot. Yeah, and oh, forget about that cliffhanger. Just you'll yeah. be all right. <laughs> yeah. So like, I'm well, I think it might. That, Rachel, did did they say how many um, episodes is going to be? No. Well, nothing that I've seen. I didn't look into it. I can look into it, but like, I think it might be better as a TV show because they're cramming so much from the arc. You can't you can't put all of that stuff in a movie. I it's going to be it's, it's too much information so it needs to be but what the thing, happens the, the good thing about the good thing about one piece and like the reason like it's long it's it's long and drawn out because they take their time with each character and you understand their characters 100 percent deeply so later down the road when things do happen and bad things do happen you have that emotional connection <laughs> there is not one character in one piece that they're like here's two episodes and we on no even the minor characters are getting 10 15 episode story arcs so you yeah. care about all of these characters so right. like spoiler nah, I don't... Mm-hmm. when people die in this movie you care i mean people die in this in one piece you care because they devoted so much time for establishing them yeah. So according to IMDb, there's going to be eight episodes in season one. How long are the episodes? It doesn't say, but oh, probably okay. I would say probably like forty minutes to an hour. Yeah, it would have to be right. Oh, I, actually, yeah. it could. No, I I don't think that they would have a live action show that's thirty minutes. No, no, 
I I wouldn't think so. I'm thinking at least be an hour, and if it's putting together the entire crew, well, entire core crew, because I saw all, all of them there. At some point, you see Chop, I, and I see no, Chop not Chopper. No, not Chopper. I I say, what? Well, because yeah, I'm the... thinking. Yeah, the the original like five, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. Because Chopper comes like right there, at, like towards like the right at the end of that, and then, but um, that, I was like, dang, like that's that's a lot of episodes <laughs> to cram in together. To right, because honestly, like they took like that whole. I don't know if I I don't know if put a number to it, but them meeting each other did not happen quick. Like, uh, the mm-hmm. guy with the suit, Sanji. That's like way when they get to like East Blue and stuff like that. Right. Like later on, we so, don't know what East so Blue like means. They're, they're, okay, so that's later on, and basically pad. far away. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. So it's just it's like a long story that they're cramming about meeting these guys, meeting their crew so quickly. So that's why, it's like, I'm want to see how I know they're going to cut a lot, a lot of stuff out, but I just want to see how they do it and for it to make sense. I don't want it to be no like. DC uh, Justice League, all of a sudden all the characters are here, we're happy and everything else like that. No, Right. So, I don't know. Like, that's the thing. Because just getting to Sanji, like, so getting to Nami and, and Zoro, like, okay, I can see that happening within one episode. But getting to mm-hmm. just Sanji <laughs> and Usopp, right. like, that's that's a whole lot of content that was skipped to get to them. Like not not only just contact like other arcs just to get to them, because like are you doing the Arlo arc? Are you doing like because all this stuff makes sense for just not me? Like you know what I mean? Like so I don't know. This will be interesting. Right. That's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because well, then I'm... last thing about Nami, are they going to talk about uh, like you said her story arc and the slave stuff and all this? Are yeah. you going to bring that into it? The slave stuff. Okay. Well, oh, yeah. I look forward to Matt's solo review of that. <laughs> and uh, depending on what he says, I'll let you know if I look into it. <laughs> well, no, see, it'll be different. I need you. That's something we should do together because okay. it's kind of like, you know, if they did a, like, for example, when like Harry Potter or something come out and I'm just like, oh, this was a great little movie. And you're like, no, they took this out, this out, this out. We don't have the same context. So okay. I might be upset about it, but you might love it. Okay, all right. We we'll do something together. Um, Fran, you're cooking a human. I am a whole human. A whole human. Um, yeah, I was tired, boss. I was tired. Um <laughs> that's all I they, got. they they drain you from the inside. Man. Okay, so here's the thing. Like most of my friends know my humor. And when I'm I'm sitting here going, Yeah, the little parasite just made me super tired today. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be late to work. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna mm-hmm. I'm throwing it out there. And they're just like the parasite friend. I said Look, do these people not have children? Right. No, they do. They like. Then they should like... know. <laughs> they should know no, how mo- it is. Yeah. Now most of them have children, and they're just laughing at me because they're like the parasite. I can't believe you call the little the little kid a parasite. And I'm just like, but, but essentially, if we break it down, that's what RJ is. I love him, but that's who he is right now. He's a parasite because everything is just so... draining me. Right. You say RJ is is yeah. are you saying that your 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 child's going to be a junior? Uh no, uh, he's not a junior, but it, uh, he's named after a couple people. So. I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, that's just his nickname. Okay. Um, and so, uh, let's let's just you know how like pregnancy people are like oh my god it's a joy once you get past that first trimester it's fine it's a breeze. Who says that? Who I have says no that? fucking clues, but like. People have told me that, and I was like, "No, who has I, told I, you that? Who has lied to you? I've I'm seen not, it firsthand. I've seen yeah. it firsthand." <laughs> right, right. The people who lied to me were not my friends. That's all I got. They y- y'all weren't my friends because you could have just been straight up with me. Why am I actually exhausted? Like I had things I wanted to do today. The bag was calling my name. I was like, "Nope, I'm, I'm taking a nap. I'm taking no, a nap." No, uh-uh. I'm with you on that, friend. I feel the same way about marriage. Just like people are like oh marriage is such a beautiful thing but it's like man you know how much work this is this is stupid <laughs> you know how hard it is to live with another person man and then you living with a person inside of you exactly like there are so many times like i've had to go to events uh, recently in the past like couple of weeks and i'm like 
y'all, I'm tired. My feet are swollen. Mm-hmm. Uh, like he's kicking me in my ribs mm-hmm. right now. And I just don't feel like doing anything. And or I like I have a rough day at work and I'm like, fuck, all I want is like a Malibu and pineapple. And I, cannot <laughs> <drink it>. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot drink it because I will not <laughs> be that person. Are you doing the two glasses of wine a day? Mm-mm, nothing like completely dry not even uh black coffee um no i don't really drink coffee i'm a more okay. of a tea drinker okay so um i just drink a herbal tea versus any other tea which doesn't have any caffeine in it i got you um and so yeah i literally be sitting here uh got to the third trimester and then you know basically our dude's like hey here's some gestational diabetes at you Oh, oh uh, no. FYI, we don't eat chicken no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, these kids are something else. <laughs> these <I> these <laughs> these Gen A kids are something else. Man, I just I'm just like chicken. I can't have chicken. We black. No, I can't have chicken. <laughs> he he, your yo baby don't know what color it is. It's dark in there. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> but yeah. Yep, yep. So I started, boss. I started. I'm like, I, I hit the third trimester, and I was like, all right. So as a result, oh. you want to quit your job? Uh, n- not as a result. I want to quit my job, but like, if I could just be independently wealthy and not have to go to work or move, I would have been perfectly fine with that. But you know, I just can't be a housewife. My husband said no. Uh, I mean. <laughs> that's look look i hate to be i hate to be one of those men on one of those podcasts but you females <laughs> no i understand what you're saying i i too would love to be a kept man in one way or another but we talked about this i think last week i would literally eat a gun if i had to be a stay-at-home parent but um <laughs> if i could just be at home chilling i would yeah yeah i oh no don't get me wrong like I probably won't never be able to be a stay at home parent. Um, I've helped raise plenty of other kids in my life outside of, you know, gestating or growing this one. Um, <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> but like, as of right now, like, it's just the final part, the final few months where I'm just pushing. I'm just like, how much, how much time do I have? <laughs> <laughs> how much time you got in your sentence? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Where's my what's my PTO looking like?" <laughs> I have to save some because I have a whole twelve weeks I got to get paid for. Uh, Are they not giving you time off for work? So I get I can get up to twelve weeks for FMLA, essentially. But it's not paid. Oh. But it, but like whatever is paid, it, like whatever is paid is coming off of what I have. So uh, I, yeah, it was like that for me. And I tell you what, we spent like fifteen thousand dollars just last year for daycare. Wow. Yep. Yep. Daycare yeah. is a killer. It yeah. Is. Yeah. We are. Um, we are on a list for daycare that's like literally around the corner from a house that that seems to be really good. Um, yeah. Which is going to cost some coins. It's it's definitely gonna cost some coins. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, because yeah, they 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 tax for baby babies. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um. But like I think what we're, what we're gonna end up doing is I'll I'll take my first twelve weeks and then my husband gets like up to I think fifty days off. Okay. So, um, so he he gets a few weeks as well, right? <laughs> and so by that time, uh, RJ would be like really close to like six months old. Um, wow. with he would have like parents at the home. Plus, Derek works like half of the week from home. So, mm-hmm. like for for the most part, he's gonna ha- be having like a two parent household yeah. for a g- good few months um, okay. until we're like, all right, well, <laughs> now it's you're off real, to the buddy. <laughs> right, yeah. you're grown now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rachel, you have it's um, summertime, and so you've been going out to see shows in the hot. Yes. Well, um, the first show started. Um, so we're just on the first show of the Muni, which, uh, for people not from St. Louis, it's an outdoor theater in Forest Park in St. Louis. Um, and so the first show was Beautiful, the Carol King musical, and it was, it was a good one. I 
thought I would know some of her songs. Like, I knew I would know some of the songs, but I didn't know how much I knew until after the show. Because she helped write a bunch of songs before she herself was an artist writing her own songs. So it was it was fun, and I hadn't seen it before. I always like seeing something new. But it actually wasn't too hot that night. It was it was a little chilly. It it dropped that night. So, um, but I'm sure we're gonna good. get some. Yeah, but I'm sure we're gonna get plenty of hot days to come. So, I'm not familiar with any Carol King. Is there anything that I would know? Oh yeah, I'm sure all of you guys would recognize some of her songs. Um, I was wishing I'd brought the program with me to say some of the music because I don't remember all of the titles but I'm I'm sure you would have recognized at least one of the songs um because they they were sung by all different people um before she broke out on her own as an artist and uh the musical is just like about her life so it kind of starts off when she's a teenager um and she sells her first song and then it goes through um up until she has like this big night I want to say in Carnegie Hall um a night of her singing her songs so it spans a pretty good chunk of time um you know she's is she still alive yes you know I think okay Okay. Because <laughs> I was wondering, like, you know how sometimes they'll do um, shows or movies or whatever about a famous person and it's kind of kid gloves because, like, they, it's, they're still alive. So, like, they were involved in the creation of it. Yeah. So, I don't know how involved she was in the musical. I know that in the program it said she, it was too painful to sit through the whole thing for her. But she did join them on stage for the fifth anniversary of the show. Does the show paint her in a good light? Like, did she? I don't know if she had drug addiction, but a lot of like musicians did. No, she was pretty wholesome in the in the musical. So okay. Um, I mean, she. Yeah, it was it was more her husband. He was on drugs. Yeah, he he kind of got into like partying and other stuff and and they got married and had their first kid pretty young so it was kind of a thing for them where he was going out and partying and she was you know trying to write music and then trying to be home with her kid and it was it was a whole thing i'm looking her up on wikipedia and you can tell she's wholesome because normally when you scroll down to the bottom, it'd be like a task or controversies. Was she Christian? Like not like her religion, but like did, was her music like Christian themed or something? No, like that? not at all. It was, um, do you know, like the locomotion song? Do the I, was, locomotion. I was just reading that. I was just reading that. She'll she, produce that. she, <laughs> she helped write that. Um, she wrote you've got a friend which most people would probably recognize um trying to think of what else she wrote that people would recognize but she she wrote stuff for all different kinds of groups before she went out on her own with her husband so she she also did you make me feel like a natural woman yeah that was her yeah that was her that was carol king interesting okay Okay. Mm, okay. Well, what's been going on at work, Rachel? Um, so it's been interesting. We we've, we've had two vacancies for a while now. My old position since I took over for a coworker's position who left the team but stayed in the organization, and then one coworker just left the organization altogether. So, we've had to hire two more people or we're trying to And um, I thought it was interesting because in the process with me, like I did the first interview with the supervisor of the department and then the director of of multiple departments, but like overseeing that program as well. And then there was a second interview with the whole department together as a group. Okay. And so now that we're looking at candidates, we we're doing second interviews and wait, wait, we're, you're you're administrating the interviews 
N- no, not not me. Okay. But the supervisor has included us on the second interviews. Okay. So we had a chunk of time for like three, three and a half hours this past Thursday where we were just doing second interviews and then talking about the people in between the interviews. And I thought that was like an interesting process because I've never been involved in any interview process yeah. as just a normal worker because I'm I've never been in a manager position so I was kind of curious to see if you guys had ever experienced that on either end like being interviewed by the team or participating in the team in like an interview Matt needs yeah, to go both. last <laughs> both really yeah So, like, obviously participating as a team, like, that came for a lot of, like, my direct managership when I was working at a previous organization. They were like, yeah, we got to see if you can get along with the people that you are going to be over. Makes sense. um, So that was more of that and just kind of um, getting a feel for that candidate, getting our opinions on, like, hey, I didn't really... I have no, I have no opinion whatsoever. They didn't really make an impression, or I really like this person. And then also, like when I was leading other programs, I had to sit in on interviews because I would be basically their direct trainer, coworker, and manager oh, um, gotcha. for a program. And so I was just like, I'm sitting here looking at like my director going. So what questions do I need to ask? Because, you know, I ain't never done this before. I'm just here. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm here to like not a smile. Like, you better, you better, you better let me know because I might ask some inappropriate things. I'm just here <laughs> so I don't get fined. That part. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like a little. So since they're interviewing for like a position I used to have, I was like, I can answer questions for, you know, the two candidates who came in for that position and. One person did ask me questions. The other person asked me no questions whatsoever about the position. Rachel. And I was like. Were they a man? N- both were women. Oh. Okay. I was trying to say something about these men. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. You, you couldn't even say that. Well, I mean, it might have been that one came in there with the confidence of a mediocre white man. And mm-hmm. um, <laughs> that's kind of what they do. They're like, no, I'm good. I know everything. Um, I've never interviewed um, with a team or I feel like I probably interviewed against the team. Oh, actually, yeah. At our last job, they had panel interviews. But um, the job I had before I met Matt, uh, the organization there, I was in management and I had to administer administer interviews and it was interesting. Um, You know, I don't really understand why they asked for it, but we hated it when we had to get read a cover letter because we're like we don't want to do this like (laughs) just just hit just give me these bullet points all right like we're trying to turn this out like what are we doing here this is extra work (laughs) Uh, yeah oh my gosh i hate i hate writing cover letters uh they don't want to read that like i don't know why 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 have we as a professional society been like yes cover letters are a thing nobody trying to read all this extra shit I, no, I, I guess no. someone and someone has to if they're no, they requiring it. I remember <laughs> I applied to this organization that I'm working for now um, for other positions, and I didn't write a cover letter like it was optional. When I did write a cover letter, I finally got a call back. I feel like them saying "please give us a cover letter" is equivalent to like them saying we want a college degree. A lot of these jobs, you don't need one, but they just want to see if you have the capacity to listen. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's right. more about like following directions yeah. than actually like. Yeah, I bet you, you they did not quality. read those cover letters. <laughs> oh man, I feel I feel like cover letters. The only useful thing <laughs> that can come out of a cover letter is possibly being able to explain something in more detail than you would on your resume. Or CV, but that's right. what the interviews for, right? They're trying to weed you out. But also, uh, it's been a while since I applied for a job. But like, isn't the cover letter just basically saying I want to work here? It's yeah, why so, you would be a good fit for the position and why you want to work there. Yeah. Right. 
so it's it's broken down into like a introduction of you right and here are all my great qualities um here is a good breakdown of all of like my work skill um and how that could benefit you as an organization or whatever um as well as me explaining all the great things about me and in in essence of these work skills and then why you want to interview and hire me because i am so fucking great that is basically the (laughs) breakdown of a cover letter so Matt, matt why don't you give your response to rachel's question I've been all over. I've been interviewed. I've been the EEO equal opportunity officer for interviews. And I've been on the panel. I've asked the questions. I've came up with the questions. Um, it's so much easier being just a EEO because, you know, I just got to make sure they don't ask no, nothing crazy. And I just sit there. But like when you, when you interview, you're nervous. You know, they're asking you questions and you got to answer. So you're not really thinking about other stuff. So me as a EO, I'm listening to the question, but then as I'm listening to the person say their answers, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, ooh, that's not, you need to get you need to do something else. That wasn't a good question or that wasn't a good answer. I'll just say it in my head, but I'm not trying to give no facial expressions, let them know each way what I'm thinking. Now me on the board, because we have to write down their answers, and I'd be thinking, Come on, man. You need to give me something else, man. Keep talking because you ain't giving me nothing to work with right here. Or sometimes I'm like, oh, spot on. But, you know, I can't let them know. Yeah. Stone face. Can't let Poker them know face. what I'm thinking. Right. But it's, it's, uh, yeah. And like you said, like once we do the interview, they leave and then we talk about um, what we thought about it because we just did interviews a couple weeks ago. And like it's easy when you have like average and then one outstanding but it's hard when you get two outstanding or three outstanding and then you're like now you gotta break it down from not just interview let me go back and look at that resume now because usually like when we skim through the resume make sure they have the basic skills that we're looking for and then don't read the cover letter an interview not in no cover letters (laughs) yeah (laughs) um and then but then, like, if they're both outstanding in an interview, all right, now we got to go back to the resume. Let me look at their skills. It is just more time. But speaking of, like, resumes, we got one time we got a resume, and this this thing was, like, six pages long. And we was like, no. <laughs> no. no. You do not no. have this. Automatically, you know. <laughs> right, you right. played it yourself. Like, <laughs> right, right. It was like, there is no reason why your resume needs to be six pages long. There is no reason why your, you need to go back to 1984 or something like that on your resume oh my gosh they they tell you to go back at least 10 years you don't need to be going back especially stuff that's not relevant to this job why are you telling me that and when you was 18 you worked at mcdonald's that has nothing to do with this so it's just little stuff like that on their resume that where people just don't know yeah, okay. I feel like I feel like they should be a page, just one page, unless you're like in in academics, and then they want to see all the classes that you've taught and things like that. But mm-hmm. otherwise, I've always heard just one page, like one sheet. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. Like I have, I have like a master <laughs> uh, resume with all of my jobs and kind of job descriptions and things like that. That can be like, well, this one is relevant to this job. And this one is relevant to this job, and I can cut and paste into a new document. Um, but other than that, like for the most part, even even for like professional jobs that I would be able to do right now, like for the most part, it's here is my like I have here is like my experience, and like you get like maybe two three job descriptions. I have experience. Here's here's your worth. Also, I'm trained in a whole bunch of stuff. Here you go. After that, like you want my you want my references? You want like what do you want? Right. Speaking of references, I had to call uh one person's reference, uh their job, their previous job. And I wonder, does anybody like, for example, say if you was a manager and you had a bad worker, right? And somebody was like, Oh, this person is looking for another job, you wouldn't tell them that they're bad. You'd be thinking, Oh yeah, get this person out of here. Yeah, this person's a great worker. 
it depends because like you got some vindictive people that even though that they don't like the employee they don't want them to like you know elevate themselves succeed right Mm -hmm. right yeah yeah so matt you have been doing some work out in the field um no not at all (laughs) (laughs) Um, i see i see how it is okay um remember a couple a month ago when i told you i watched that netflix show sanctuary yes uh, about the sumo wrestlers so since then i've been really into sumo stuff i've been like when i had time i google some things on youtube and stuff but then i don't know the reason why i don't know if it's summertime whatever but the uh, the base has uh they brought in two they brought in sumo wrestlers for a meet and greet and now yeah you could probably comment comment on this i've never been to a comic con or one of those places where you meet a celebrity right okay um like when i was telling you about this i was like oh yeah maybe i can get an interview with him maybe we can do this maybe we can do that and we waited for like we got there we he, they were like oh he's at lunch and we was like, okay, we waited about twenty minutes. We waited about twenty minutes. So back. wait, what? What this this event was just like a meet and greet for a whole bunch of sumo wrestlers, or one specific? It was two sumo wrestlers, and it was just meet and greet these these sumo wrestlers from Tokyo. Okay. And it, it, even the flyer said arm wrestle too. <laughs> uh, but we get there, they say at lunch. So we wait the 20, 30 minutes, still not back. We wait forty five minutes, still not back. And I'm talking, you know. They are sumo wrestlers. Maybe they're eating a lot then. <laughs> so we waited. So then, like, it's an hour, and I'm like, all right, I'm about to leave. And then my wife was like, well, you know what's going to happen is as soon as we leave, mm-hmm. they're going to show up. So I was mm-hmm. like, I already told Chad I was going to do this. So I was like, we waited longer. So basically an hour, 20 minutes later, Mm-mm. he come back. So then, you know, of course, we get in line to meet him. Um, and all of us was I was like, ah, Kenichiwa, Arigato Gozaimasta. Took a picture. I was like, autograph on a So he gave me his autograph. I was like, Arigato, thank you so much. And then that was it. <laughs> no, so, I mean, that's well, pretty standard fair. I mean, it depends because, like, um, it's pretty, or- it's mostly organized. So, like, either if you're going to do a photo op, there's a special line for that. And like it, you know, they keep it moving. So like you go in, oh, hey, how do you do? You take the picture and you keep it moving. It should be no more than 30 seconds with the person. Now, if you pay for like an autograph or something, you're meeting them in a, in a different area. Like the photographs is like a cordon off area. But uh, the autographs is at a table where like if you're walking by, you can see them. And that's a little bit longer because you get to actually talk to them and you're taking pictures and they're signing stuff. And you got like maybe a minute to two minutes with them. Okay, so I was like afterwards, after it was done, I was like, I don't know what I thought I wanted, but it was not that. It was just simple. 30 seconds. Hey, how you do it? Took the picture. He signed his autograph. I just sent it to the group chat so you guys could see. And that was it. I don't know. I, I can't pronounce his first name. His last name is Hadehimasa. Gotcha. Okay. Is he any good? He retired two years ago, but he was good in his uh, active day because he beat a Yokozuna before. A what Yokozuna is their is their champion, like the best of the best of the best. Um, that's the title that they give him, and he's beaten one of those before. But I guess. Um, yeah, once you retire, you're getting too old for this shit. What about you, Chad? <laughs> that is true. Um, so I am falling apart. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about how like I fucked my um, my thumb up, and I ended up going to the doctor for that, and they gave me like a um, a numbing gel for my thumb. And uh-huh. like Tuesday, I was you know I went to Costco after work, and I it was like the perfect storm because they had like all the samples out when I got out there like they was fresh <laughs> and I was just picking out and then like on the third sample I got I bit into it and like my 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 lower jaw just started hurting and I'm like that's weird and I was like well maybe it's too much sugar you know because you, you guys know me in real life I have a bit of a sweet tooth because it was like a cookie and so okay. I was like okay Bye. that's whatever so you know I get home and I'm like okay brush my teeth and, you know, when I went to rinse my mouth, it still was hurting. 
So I'm like, uh oh. So, you know, I took some um some uh, like Tylenol or whatever and I kept it moving. And I'm like, this this shall pass. And so it is currently Saturday and this pain is still here. And uh I got some numbing gel today and it's it, it helps out for like a good two or three hours. But on Monday I'm going to have to call my dentist. I don't know what this is. Yeah. But yeah, I might want to call a dentist. You said your jaw and not your tooth. Well, it's like the gums of my lower, the lower right side, not the teeth, the gums. Like it reminded me. Oh. Has anybody gotten their uh, wisdom teeth removed? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, look at us! Look at us! <laughs> yeah, I still got them because I asked for mine. <laughs> no, I uh, have zero. Na- who, who knows what the Navy did with mine? <laughs> <laughs> We are not wise anymore. Mm, that is true. <laughs> not so at all. that pain that you got, um, like when air came into your mouth, if you recall, that's what it feels like. Mm-hmm. But I got my wisdom teeth removed like a decade ago. So like, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know. Maybe you're, gr- maybe you're growing another set. Uh- <laughs> Part of me was all... Well, like, oh, guy, it would be wild if I was uh, if I was a mutant and growing some more teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would but, suck. <laughs> it would suck yes. so bad. But yeah, so you know, uh, hopefully it won't be too long before my dentist can fit me in. It'd be wild if they could see me on Monday when I call, but that's a pipe dream. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, are they also- open on Monday? Um, yeah, I said federal. I mean, I don't know. I think they are. I mean, that's a federal holiday, but it's a new one, you know? Okay. It's, 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 I feel like it's in the same vein as Columbus Day somewhat. You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, um, today I was hanging out with Rachel, uh, because she's, you know, she likes to record live, so we'll usually do stuff before the show, and uh, we we, uh, hit up the movies. Before I talk about the movie we saw, um, there is a, um, so there was an AMC on very close to where um, we live that closed during COVID, and they reopened it as another uh, movie theater chain. It's called called B&B Theaters, and apparently they're the number five movie theater in the country and i was like you lie but okay <laughs> never heard of this before yeah, never heard of them <laughs> i don't remember they basically removed like i think two or three sc- screens from when it was an amc and they've got like bowling in there and like a couple of arcade games and stuff and it's kind of neat um you know it's a dining situation uh, food was pretty good. I got like a burger and she got, well, you got popcorn, right? Yeah, I just got popcorn, which was, at first I thought it was like on par with AMC, but then I got further down and got a couple of burnt pieces every once in a while. And I was like, uh, maybe not so much. <laughs> I mean, you can roll those dice and get some burnt pieces from AMC though. I've never experienced that from I AMC. I have. Okay. I'll take your word for it. You know, I don't these, think I've ever got burnt popcorn from a movie theater before. These kids don't care that work the, the counter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then we also, like, after our movie, we um, played a, a game of bowling. And funny enough, we ran into a friend of the show, Joe, and his family. And that was cool. So, you know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, my arm hurts a little bit from, stings a little bit from bowling. But, you know, I'm old. Who won? Me and then Rachel, and then our time ran out, so we didn't have any. You know. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think I would have kept my lead if, if time kept going. So this woman got a a, a nice ass strike right before <laughs> they cut us off. I did. <laughs> it was like gutter balls in the beginning, and then I got a spare at the end and a strike at the end. Right. So she did her thing, but no. So we checked out the new Pixar movie Elemental. Um, so just so you guys are, you know, on the same page, Pixar makes movies about feelings, right? So like, what if toys had feelings? What if insects had feelings? What if Mexican people have feelings? What if black people have feelings? What if feelings have feelings? You know what I'm saying? What are feelings? Mm -hmm. So (laughs) this, this movie is what if the elements have feelings? And, um, 
basically it's an immigration story where um the the four elements there, there's like a i think it's called element city yeah yeah uh, yes yeah, think of it like a new york so like we follow like this fire family that comes to element city and they speak a different language and fireish and, very yes, original yes fireish yes yes fire yes. okay all right yeah and uh they build a community <laughs> you know basically fire town in this community in this um in this city where like all the elements are like um accounted for mostly like in the structure of the of the city so mm-hmm. like um they've got like a system of like if you want to fly as hot air balloons and like it flies the the passengers like create the air like the 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 air people right uh-huh. so stuff like that um uh-huh. i didn't really care for this movie honestly um and my issues with it were that the um the universe did not make sense like you know how like in inside out if you guys have seen it where um you kind of understood what was happening here. Like what was the function of the feelings? You had the different feelings for different things. And some would take over Riley's emotions. And then you had the core memories and like some memories, like we, we store some memories, we flush things like mm-hmm. that. And mm-hmm. in this universe it's mm-hmm. like, okay, so we have the society they, there's a government. And part of the issue mm-hmm. is like water is flooding parts of fire town. And you're like, okay, so they're like, OK, we need to get the government down here to fix this, but they don't want to do it because they're mad at the person that doesn't that asked them to do it, even though this is their job. And also, like all it needed to happen was that a, um, a gate needed to get welded so that the water wouldn't come through. And so it's like one fire person is doing this when you do you need the government to do this if you have fire and you could weld a door shut. Uh huh. And then she's right. like, she. There's also like a Romeo and Juliet type r- romance with a water guy and the fire girl. Also, side note, I didn't say this to you, Rachel, because I want to say this for Matt. But mm-hmm. man, Pixar got a problem because that fire girl was thick as fuck, man. <laughs> I'm not hey, saying say less. I, I, I say was less. already gonna see it because my son really w- wants to see this. But uh, shit, that's all you had to say. So I, I'll check it out. I'm gonna say this, man. Go see this on base. Don't spend don't spend real money on this. Yeah. I second okay. that. Yeah. Now, would a kid like it though? Because he excited to see this. Probably. But your your kid isn't your son isn't a kid kid. You know what I'm saying? So like he right. ha- he he's like self aware and he has logic and he's gonna actually ask questions about what he's seeing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Right. And you're not gonna be able to answer those questions because this this universe doesn't make sense. <laughs> Got you. Well, and on top of that, there were some like really cringy moments. Like I feel like we both cringed a couple times. Yeah, like uh, I personally feel like the main lead is extremely unlikable, especially like the first moments you meet him because he does something really messed up to the lead girl the Mm -hmm. lead woman and it's like Mm -hmm. he does this to you and yet you fall in you're you've fallen in love with him but he's going to like basically destroy your family but you you in love with this man this your man you claim him (laughs) but i love him that's that's him she gonna stand beside him (laughs) right that way (laughs) (laughs) so this one for me uh, I feel like this is two years in a row where Pixar has dropped the ball with their theatrical releases. Because uh, last year was Lightyear. Oh, God. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say, uh, I, I wasn't feeling the short film either. Uh, it was um, the, the the old man from Up. Uh, I don't recall his name, but it's called like His Name's Date. Where he's gonna, he's getting ready for a date with some old lady, and I'm like, sir, sir, we don't care about that, no, right? Not, not even <laughs> just that, but sir, you will never have love again because Ellie died. Okay, <laughs> we care about you and Ellie. At this right. Point. <laughs> okay? I'm not trying. To, I'm not trying to see you. You know, pick out what clothes to wear for this date and stuff. Like, sir, no, absolutely not. So I feel like that short was in bad taste. Right. Well, here's the thing. I guess because in my mind, like, so you just said the guy, the old, the older man from Up. I was like, what is it? What did he die? What happened? Because 
Oh, so are we getting I a thought... reunion with Ellie? Ellie, like what are we doing? <laughs> In heaven. That's like he's going on a date. I don't care about that. No, it's I your thought... way forever. <laughs> I thought the voice actor passed away. So, because I was like, oh man, this is a this is a fine enough um uh, impression. Oh, he did die. The, he passed away in August 29, thousand twenty one. Oh. This shirt came out yesterday. They, 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 did they, did they just use words that he said from the from the original movie and stitch them together? Like, what is this? It's possible. Yeah, because he was credited, wasn't he? Yes, that's why I'm like, I thought yeah, he passed away. How did they, how'd they well, do that? Unless they recorded they, it forever yeah. ago. That doesn't make sense, though. No, I mean it takes like it that. takes longer to do the animation, but like. He, yeah also he, apparently he was born in uh kansas city missouri okay that's okay. cool but yeah uh he was on mary tyler moore show oh. up dead to me elf yes yes he you would recognize him if you saw him um matt do you have anything to contribute to zelda talk um no not really um uh, I went out and got the Master Sword. Um, that's it. I haven't really done too much lately. Yeah. It's been a busy work week, and I don't mean the work where I get money. I mean this work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is volunteer work. Uh, yeah, I, I got a couple of armor pieces. Like I got um, the armor that makes you climb faster, and I finished mm-hmm. up the one where you have to... Um, and you have to help the newspaper. Oh, oh yeah, the uh, yeah. Pen. You get, yeah, you get the um, the the suit that lets you uh, climb climb stuff that's that's slippery. Yeah, I got that one too. Yeah. So have like, you really, have you upgraded anything all the way yet? Not all the way, just to like level two where you get like the set bonus. So like, my slippery suit is at level two, so I don't slip anymore. But I haven't taken anything to level four yet. I took my uh, fierce deity. Ooh. I took that one all the way up. Yeah, you're a strong boy, huh? Mm-hmm. Cause uh, I've been getting my ass kicked, so I was like, <laughs> I need That's to do fair. something. That's fair. I need to do something. But yeah, we're keeping it brief. Maybe we'll have some time Nerds. to talk about Zelda next week. Um, I feel like it's a lighter week next week. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so that takes us to this week's discussion of our very first musical, the SpongeBob musical. Who lives in a pineapple? I'm ready, I'm ready. Live on stage? SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy attempt to save an erupting volcano from destroying Bikini Bottom. Meanwhile, Plankton sees this as his time to strike. So, what's you all's relationship to the series? So... Funnily enough, I didn't watch a lot of Spongebob growing up. My mom didn't really like it that much. Um, So I wasn't really exposed to it except for when my cousins were around and they would have it on the TV at my grandparents' house. But even then, I didn't really like it that much. The, The TV show didn't excite me. So like seeing anything related to the TV show was not really like I probably wouldn't have watched it if unless I was on here so unless I was like babysitting someone I never really watched Spongebob I think the most uh the most I I know about Spongebob in general is the theme song um (laughs) (laughs) yes outside of that I'd be like yeah it's the you know yellow guy with the dumb friend I Mm. I don't know it is what it is (laughs) um but yeah I never really watched this this was uh past not my demographic by the time it came out i should say that <laughs> definitely not yes, after your time yes um so i remember when this show came out i was in middle school and i thought it was dumb so like in the um 24 years that has been on the air Good i God. think i could count on maybe one hand how many episodes i've seen like how much of the show I've seen. I've seen stuff here and there. Like I like uh, the most exposure I have to this show, and I feel like all of us can say this are the memes. The show's been on yeah. so long that you know there's a meme for everything. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Well, cartoons are so expressive, it's easy to make them into memes. Yeah. I don't know if I watched it when it originally aired or later on once um, I had my son and then it was on. So I watched plenty of episodes of uh, SpongeBob. Okay. Um, has anybody seen the musical before? Nope. No. Uh, well, I've seen this musical because I asked you guys to watch it. Uh, but, oh, we got a special guest coming on. Uh, this person has seen it before. Hello. This so, is my son, Matthew. What is the, con- like, how have you seen this? Um, so, like, I was on, like, YouTube and, like, um, on, on, on Nickelodeon's. Like, I was just, like, watching Spongebob, and then, like, soon I came across, like, a musical, and I clicked it, and I just continued watching it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's <laughs> usually how they get you. So, yeah, brought down uh, the rabbit hole. All right. <laughs> so, why don't you tell me what you thought of the musical? I thought the musical was really good and also really bad at the same time. There was a lot of, like, cringy moments. Oh, my. Can you give me yeah. any examples? It's like the actor for SpongeBob was like his face was really expressive okay. and he made a lot of weird faces that made me feel uncomfortable. Like oh, okay. kind of just funny faces that like don't look normal. And like sometimes like yeah, I guess like just abnormal faces the okay. actors express and like just weird moments when they sing and stuff but it was also like actually kind of catchy the song some of the songs like, <laughs> okay they're somewhat catchy so the songs are pretty good and another weird part i felt was like some of the characters when they sing it didn't feel like the character they were like Mm. when patrick the actor for patrick when he sang it didn't i didn't feel any like patrick star vibes like i get he you. sang I get good you. but like it didn't feel like patrick star okay so have you thought about replacing your dad on this podcast <laughs> <laughs> i mean this is some this is some good analysis of of the of the show here i don't plan to but <laughs> but if I have to, I will. <laughs> um, nah, man, you gotta ask for money for that. <laughs> Don't worry, so, I'll fall behind the scenes. <laughs> so while Isn't that the, what all Paris world is for this for they're trying to take over? Yeah, like I, I imagine like in about, you know, twenty five years when we're still doing this, uh, you know, we would just turn it over to our children, you know? Right. <laughs> Um, so I want to ask since we're all here, um, so funny, you mentioned the music MJ and I feel like Fran made a comment on the music. Um, so the interesting thing about this musical in particular is that they wanted to, they wanted each song to have like a different feel and sound because traditionally when you do musicals, you'll have like one person doing the music. So, for example, like Hamilton, Lin Manuel Miranda wrote almost every single song. So, like mm-hmm. it, all the songs have like his, like his voice to them, right? Mm-hmm. And um, with this one, they went to fifteen different artists to write the songs in this musical, so that they all have a different vibe. So, the one I'm pretty sure you referencing, you referenced in our group chat, friend, where you're like, "Why everybody got to rap?" Ti wrote mm-hmm. that song. Uh. He he wrote it for people who cannot rap. I just <laughs> right, Ooh, and so bad. like uh. just 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 for like a couple examples here. So you've got um the plain white tees, panic at the disco, Cindy Lauper, Yolanda Adams, Flaming Lips, Sarah Bareilles, Steven Tyler, Lady Antebellum, John Legend. They might be giants, and that's about all that you guys would care about. Um, mm-hmm. and also remember that that might come up later. Oh, Ooh. Um, Matt, what were your thoughts on this musical? I did not like it. Oh. I did not like it. I was bored throughout the whole thing. Um, <laughs> it, I, I did not like this. It, it was. 
kind of made me angry to, <laughs> to sit here and watch this. Like, I did not like it. Now, I say that because I I was bored. I did not care. I didn't I didn't like this. But what I if I was there live, I feel like I will have a great time. OK. But just watching them do this, it was just. Like some of the songs was catchy, like I appreciate more of the actors than I do of this show. Like, I don't know if you guys see on Twitter and stuff, you'd be like, name a scene where they was uh, playing it for their check or whatever like that or whatever. <laughs> to me, SpongeBob, that actor, it was like he was, if he didn't finish this, if he didn't do this 100%, he wasn't getting paid. Like, he was acting, <laughs> dancing, doing everything he needed to do. Like, he was him. Even when um, Plankton, when he did his little rap thing and he danced, I was like, I appreciated them, their abilities. Like, SpongeBob, he was doing everything. He was jumping, he was running, he was singing, he was dancing. He was doing he was doing break dancing moves. Like, I appreciate that of it, but it's just watching this on TV is not entertaining for me like i can i can do a disney movie where you know they they sprinkle in some music here and there but like to watch a whole movie about singing nah but i mean what i would be open to now i will go see go to the muni or whatever the fox and see a musical i figure i I, in my mind i treat this like baseball i wouldn't watch Mm -hmm. it on tv but i think if i went there live i'll have a good time okay um why don't we balance this out a little bit rachel oh okay (laughs) um i can go next um so i thought the musical was all right um i i had some things that i liked and some things that i didn't like i did like the music okay um i did like that they had different styles i thought the story was kind of like, I was the opposite of Matt. I was like, there was a lot going on. I was not bored. Like, I was like, there are a lot of storylines here. Um, but some of the stuff annoyed me. Like, this, I was like, do they really have to do the sound effects every single time oh, the people Squidward walk? Walked, yeah. and, and when SpongeBob walked. And um, But there were some... So I had, like, some questions. But then I also really liked some some parts of it like I liked the little details I thought it was cute when they had like the playbill for Squidward and it said play Gill like Mm. little stuff like that um I thought Spongebob's optimism worked really well for a musical because usually like especially old classical musicals are like very optimistic so um I thought that worked well I thought them actually using like the sponges in a dance routine was kind of fun. Um, and the pirate breaking throughout the end was kind of fun. That was, I think that was actually the voice of SpongeBob. Really? I think. So it was kind of a cameo. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was, it, it's not my favorite musical, but it's, it's not, it wasn't bad. I didn't think. Okay, uh, Fran. I mean, I mean, it was it was a musical, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I realized that I am not the demographic for this. I I get that, so I was like, while I was watching, I was just like, I don't care, <laughs> but I can see how this would catch. Uh, kids in in a certain age range and things like that. Like I can I can see how this would be highly entertaining for them. Overall, like it it was an entertaining musical in general. It was entertaining, um, but I was just like I don't I don't really care. And music wise, I was like all right. Well, some of these songs are I guess nice. I think the best song for me was like the more gospel one. Mm. I was like yeah, that one is really catchy. Um, <laughs> But I was like, but it just might be because I'm black. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, outside of that, I was just like, okay, well, I I kind of want this to be a tragedy, but I know they wouldn't do that. So, wow, you want them all to die, huh? I'm just saying, like, if that was a tragedy, that would have been like, oh, wow, that was a twist. 
<laughs> but no. Um, outside of that, I was like, ooh, if they would have made this a tragedy, like how would they would have done that? And then it would be like, SpongeBob wakes up. It was all a bad dream. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, other than that, like it was, it was decent enough for a musical in itself. But would I watch it again? No. So this falls in that category for me where it's like, I'm not a fan of the source material, but I like the musical. Like, I do not like Beetlejuice, the movie, but I love the musical. I'm not a fan of SpongeBob, the TV show, but I really like this musical. Like, I love the mu- the music. I love how catchy it is. I, uh, I feel like it is well cast. I feel like... Um, I appreciate them making Sandy a black woman. And then part of the plot is how the community is othering her. But we aren't necessarily saying that this is about race. Like it's about the, the musical is about climate change. And, you know, it came out during the Trump times, you know, where like the government doesn't want to acknowledge certain things. I, I love the set design. I love like when musicals play around with like, hey, we are on stage. So there are certain things we can't do. Like when they were scaling the mountain, but there was rel- that was represented by them like walking up ladders and stuff. I yeah. thought that was uh-huh. cool. And, like it moving what? around or like they're trying, they're at the top of the mountain and they look down on the town and it's just like a little model of the town when they're looking down at it. Mm-hmm. So like I appreciate all of those things about this musical um and it was between and just to piggyback off that like that's why i feel like if you were there live yeah to me like seeing stuff like that would probably like hit harder and yeah. things like like and also what rachel said about the sound effect stuff i did like that i, I it added a little bit of icing on the cake or whatever for the whole thing i just feel yeah. like um it's hard to enjoy it through a TV through show a where it's better live. Yeah. I get that. Um, but anyway, trivia time. So since this was technically a TV movie, it's not on IMDb. Um, so it's going to be like, out of 10, it's going to be like a 5.7 or a 6.7. Say a number, 0. 0.7. What do you think the rating was? Six point seven point seven. 8.7. What? I guess I'll do 6.7. MJ, you want to throw something out there? 7.7? Yes. Oh, you copied your dad. But um, you two are right. <laughs> it's, it was 7.7 out of 10 with 569 reviews. But all right. This is the trivia I want you to play. This week we play Who Wrote the Song. I will read the title and lyrics from a song, and you must tell me who wrote it. All right, so the first one is Superstar Sea Star. And the lyric is, I'm glad someone's following me for a change. Now where we'll go? Um, I don't know. Was it A, T.I., B, Yolanda Adams, or C, John Legend? C. C, John Legend. I'll just be different and go with B. B. Yeah. Are you sure you want to follow your dad, MJ? T.I., Yolanda Adams, or John Legend? It's not A, but I think C. It's B, Yolanda Adams. All right. That's the gospel song you like so much, Fran. See, I was debating, but, you know. Don't 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 stick with your dad on this one, MJ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next one, Bikini Bottom Boogie. You snooze, you're gonna lose. You better make your wish. With this fan, I'm gonna win, so you can kiss my jellyfish. A, Steven Tyler. B, Panic at the Disco. C, The Flaming Lips. B. Panic at the Disco. A. Mm, A. <laughs> Stop copying your son, man. <laughs> Hey, who got to see what happens? <laughs> it is Steven Tyler. Hey? Yeah, see, it was Steven Tyler, oh. yeah. Um, hero is my middle name. Wallowing in sorrow won't get us anywhere. 
you'll find all the strength you need is inside. Like Poseidon, like Poseidon, oh shit. Like Poseidon riding across the tide. Don't let this moment pass by. A. Cindy Lopper. B. Sarah Bareilles. Or C. Lady Antebellum. A. C. I'm going to go with B. MJ? B. It was Cindy Lopper. Um, last one. I guess I miss you. Everything I've got's so good, but not without you. And suddenly nothing feels quite right. Why does the sunshine feel like night? I'm only pretending I'm all right without you. A, Panic at the Disco, B, John Legend, or C, Sarah Bareilles? B. 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 MJ? B. What'd you say? B. Okay. Uh, it is John Legend, B. Process right. elimination. I used them earlier. It didn't work, so I went back to them. <laughs> well, I was intentional. Like all three answers on that one were previously wrong answers on the on the last three questions. Ah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I, I I wrote that like that intentionally. All right, trivia dump. Um, SpongeBob the mu- SpongeBob SquarePants the musical opened at the Oriental Theater in Chicago on June nineteenth, two thousand sixteen. This was a preview, similar to like how Rachel and I, Rachel and I saw the Devil Wears Prada the musical last summer. Uh, the musical began previews on Broadway at the Palace Theater on November 6, 2017 and opened on December 4, 2017. The musical closed on December 16, 2018 after 327 regular performance without recouping its $18 million costs. Its run was cut short due to renovations of the theater. So that kind of sucks that it was a money pit. (laughs) Um, So I found this very interesting. And this is more leaning towards Matt. Stephanie Hsu from, uh, sorry, Academy Award nominated Stephanie Hsu (laughs) um, did not reprise her role as Karen, the computer, because she was the original uh, Karen. Oh. Because she was filming the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Yes. Yes. So I did not know that she was a Broadway actress. Who is this? The daughter from Everything Everywhere at Once. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I could see her singing though. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna see her in a couple of weeks in Joyride. Okay. All right. Last thing. In order to fit the TV length, some minor aspects of the stage show were cut. The original prologue of Patchy the Pirate crashing the show was replaced by an animated prologue of SpongeBob characters about to watch the show using previously animated footage from the policy trailer. Um, What? Using previously animated footage. Oh, okay. No. Um, Yeah. Uh, Using previously animated footage. The boulders from the volcano were initially uh, represented by giant bouncy balls coming from a Rube Goldberg device from both sides of the stage. Unfortunately, the theater could not accommodate uh, their devices. Uh, The second reprisal of Bikini Bottom Day at the beginning of Act 2 was removed. Due to time, the beginning of the third verse of Best Day Ever was cut. In the original stage show, SpongeBob theme song happened after the curtain call, but due to time, the theme song is sung right after the Bikini Bottom finale, followed by a proper curtain call. Mm. All right, so that takes us to the end of this week's episode. I'd like to thank special guest MJ for coming in and giving his analysis of the musical. I want to. Yeah, you want to plug? Oh, yeah. I always forget about that part. Anybody else's work who's more successful than us you would like to plug? Oh, <laughs> uh, let me give a shout out to my boy Ninja support. <laughs> uh, He's trying to get his Twitch count up, so he, next time he might have something to plug. Okay, all right, that's what's up. I uh, want to thank Rachel for coming on. Um, always a pleasure. This is like, what, your 20th appearance? <laughs> something like that. 
And uh, we want to thank Fran for coming on too. Um, this might be the last time we see you before you know you are released from your prison sentence. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, random question: When is your shower? Uh, next week. Hmm. So many gifts. It um. So the shower has turned into a uh, instead of a shower, a baby banquet. Uh, that's the way I like to. What is a Raise baby it? banquet? Um, it's purely just because the amount of people who said they were coming, which I is see. like 118. Nope. So, wow. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, that's why it's the baby banquet versus the baby shower. Fair enough. Why wouldn't you call it like a baby hurricane? <laughs> yeah, something like that. You know. Tsunami. Tsunami. So, my brother's was a tsunami because he had just over 100. Oh, um, I see. I as see. well. So okay. um, I was just like, yeah, it could be a nice banquet. I'll have a nice sit down meal. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> uh, I do want to give a quick shout out. So I have something to plug, but clearly I'm stalling for time because I didn't pull it up. I want to give a plug. Friend of the show, Nelson. I was um, watching his Twitch, Twitch stream the other day and he gave us a plug, so I do want to return the favor. He is Doug the Scruff 314. That's Doug T H A Scruff 314 on Twitch. He just finished up um, Hogwarts Legacy, and I think he's about to do um, that, uh, that Star Wars game. I think. The Jedi? Okay. Yeah. But yeah, uh, wanted to give that shout out. Um, yeah. But we need to start moving this to the top of the show. But, you know, we, we got some goodies on YouTube. Some stuff I will make sure that there is an audio only version of it to, you know, so, you know, give love to the people that supported us from the beginning. But some mm-hmm. stuff is YouTube only. Uh, reviews are not YouTube only, Matt. But, you know. Mm-hmm. I realized that when I was doing it. <laughs> but yeah, um, so we want to thank you so much for listening. Please rate, like, and review our podcast on your platform of choice. If you have any feedback, please email us at we used to talk pod at gmail.com. Follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at we used to talk pod. Follow me on letterbox B O W one two one three and Matt Mr. King 0257. Come back next week when we almost almost complete our indiana jones retrospective with indiana jones and the in the crystal skull um so that's next week and then in august we'll round the whole thing out with the new one i don't know if this was a good episode i don't know if this was a bad episode but whatever you think but at work thank you for listening